A friend of mine, I don't know, many of you know Michelle Levy O'Connor. Michelle's a VL player, and she was playing a concert once at one of the early music festivals. And it was one of those humid days, and she's there trying to tune these gut strings on a VL. It was just going on, and the audience is sitting there getting restless. She's tuning it, and adjusting it, and tuning it. Finally, she puts the VL there and says, Look, tuning is like aircraft maintenance, it's worth the wait. <laughs> Uh, first thing we're going to do is tune, and uh, some of us can tune and some of us can't. So let's have an A. Just tune <laughs> For fixed pitched instruments like accordions and squeeze boxes, there's nothing much we can do. Just hope that we're, we're close. Um, for recorders, the best to note to tune on is the three fingers and thumb. So if you're playing a soprano recorder, it would be a G. So let's hear the G. That's the most stable note. Tune to a G. Really? Yes. Yeah. Three fingers. To find out where the breath pressure needs to be to be in tune. Because all those instruments were tuned in the factory. <laughs> so that's the last time they were in tune. Yeah. Yeah. For alto and bass recorders, it's a C, right? So, Oh, tenors would be the G again, that's a C. So who's playing out there? Um, and your name is Heather. Oh, so Heather, why don't you two, let's have the sopranos and tenor play that G yeah, once again. So you're a C instrument, so. Also for guitars, you know, getting a G is a good note, or a D, to tune all the strings. If you want to tune up a large group very fast, if you've got a big band or something, um, pick a any note in a G chord. So that would be a G, a B natural, or a D. So pick one, okay, and play it. Pick a different one, G, B, or D. we're going to play is going to be in D major. And I found that if you play the scale several times, we're going to do more of that, one of the things it accomplishes are three important things. One thing it does is it reminds you of the, the notes that are in that scale. So if you're sitting down to play for an English country dance and you see the thing is in B flat major or D major or whatever, play that scale up and down a couple of times, and you'll find miracles will happen. So here's D major once again, all together, and it will be a little faster. D major. <laughs>
Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to split. Let's see. Let's, Sarah and Lindsay, you're going to be with the robins, and you guys are going to be the bluebirds. Um, oh. <laughs> well, part of the D major scale is around. So the bluebirds are going to start. They're going to play the E, E, and then they, when they hit the third note, you folks will start. And we're just going up and back, just as we just did. Follow. Okay. Just up to the D, and then turn around and come back, and go back up. They start, you follow. So they'll start. Here we go. What this does, and we'll do it again, the first exercise of playing the scale gets the, the notes on your fingers. Mm -hmm. And it gets, because when you get into improvisation and playing counter melodies, having those notes readily available from that vocabulary helps a lot. This exercise we just did gets the D major tonality in your head. So we'll do it very slowly, and you can hear what's going on. So we'll start with the robins this time. So on the third note, you guys come in. So we start D. Wonderful band director. Some of you have heard me tell the stories of my beloved band director, Joe Greco. Um, and uh, he gave us much wisdom. One of the things was if you're in a large group and you're playing, you want the sound to be more detached, which is what you want for most dancing, unless it's a really gooey romantic tune. Um, you have to individually play what he would say tastelessly short. The effect magnified by 22 people or whatever will come out right. So he used to tell us when he, when he wanted to attach sound, play tastelessly short individually, and the overall sound will be right. Um, let's do it short. The other pet peeve of, of a lot of large English country dance bands is everything sounds like a, you know, a wash, sounds like a wall of sound. There's no particular. So learning to play short. So, same thing, we'll start with the, the robin side. Short notes, here we go. that take you to the opening note yes. of the 
<laughs> so for this piece, you could do a, a B and an A. You could do, um, in this arrangement, she indicates a, a D. You'd have to put a different, you'd have to put another note in. I'm putting it in F sharp. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, know, you try, there are other things you could do, I suppose. It's um, an A and F sharp. As long as the notes are in the scale and they move towards the opening note, it'll work. started to rush, which is a standard problem. When I'm asked to call at various places around the country, and sometimes with the band, work with the bands, that's a common problem, is rushing. And it comes from you know, being a little nervous. Or learning the Joe Greco had an <laughs> answer to that one, too. And his, he used to tell us, play every note. Don't, don't take shortcuts, you know. Play every note, and it'll, it'll slow it down, it'll make it stay. Okay? So, tastelessly short, <laughs> and play every note. I'm going to give you two half notes as the pickup, because now we're getting up to time. So it'll be like, dee da dee. Here we go. Last two notes. Bum, bum, and all them together. Last two notes. Yeah, if you end all together, it makes a great I'm a subscriber to the Helena Cornelius School of Triple Time Dances, not doing a big retard at the end. The tunes are usually these sweet waltzes or minuets, and the tendency as musicians is for us to do this kind of schmaltzy big retard. But if you try dancing, what happens is people kind of fall over their feet at the end because the music has suddenly slowed down, and they're doing this propelled triple time movement to fall over because the music kind of drops out from under them. So yeah, it, is, it sounds better. What? It sounds better, but <laughs> I mean you could do a, just at the penultimate beat sometimes you can do um, just do what some bands do is they do concert piece. But Helena always, having been the object of her <laughs> commands, you know, I'd be sitting there and she'd turn around and she'd say, last return. It's good for marching. <laughs> hitting, you know, hitting every one of the first and third beat. One of the secrets to, to good dance music, contra dance, English dance, Scottish dance, is actually to emphasize more the upbeats. Um, my favorite saying is that gravity will take care of the downbeats. The dancers will land on the floor. Gravity will do that for you. But your job is to get them up off the floor. Give them the lift, the lift that the dance requires. And the way you do that is by emphasizing the upbeats a little bit more. So instead of
Yeah? And you can do it with articulation and volume. I'm kind of I'm slurring those. And you know, I'm getting a lot of help from Pamela because she, the, and from guitar, the boom chick, the chick, the boom chick, the boom chick, the chick gives you the upbeat. Chick, chick. Another way of thinking, you know, you often have heard about oompa band, oompa, oompa. Turn it around in your head. It's pa oom pa oom pa oom pa oom. And then lift it up. So that way. So in tune, tastelessly short, <laughs> um, and a little bit more on the off beats. Okay, just turn it. Two notes, two half notes. Same idea though, even though it's a lyrical piece, is to, to not grind the dancers into the floor. Yesterday, we warmed up with some major scales. Today, we'll do one of the modal scales, which can be very easy. This is the Dorian mode. If you think of it on the piano, it's the mode you get if you play just the white keys. But instead of starting on C, you start on D. So I'll ask Pamela slowly, start on the D, and play just, it's just a note D. The white keys. Yeah, do it again. So it doesn't sound like a major scale, does it? So if we were playing D major, we would have an F sharp and a C sharp in there. The D major scale, but the D Dorian scale, you just eliminate the sharps. We'll do that once again, all together, up and back. D Dorian. about the Dorian mode is that the, the major sound, the major chords kind of pop out in different places. And when we do a Dorian tune, you'll see. And the other thing about it is there's no, what we call no leading tone. In D major, you have It's a different 
So we will do, so once again, D to D, no sharps, all natural notes, all together, and uh, sounding, getting there. This side from the hand over. You're going to start at just about that speed. Don't play too loud so everybody can hear their own instrument. Just very softly. And then when they hit the third note, we come in. And you'll hear the sonorities are very different in Dorian. And that's why the folk process has glommed onto it as a favorite. So starting here, D Dorian, D. Ashford anniversary. You can tell me what you can do is figure out some interesting open chords. I'm going to play the first little bit of the tune. This is a dance. It's an old, old, it's a Renaissance tune. And the dance uh, was composed by Charles Bolton in the 20th century. And here's the beginning of the tune. It starts on a G, but it's in Dorian. Oh, here's the G. It goes. It's just a G, an A, G, a G. Let's all do that much, okay? Let's start stopping. So now we'll add a little pickup. So listen, listen once. It goes. Goes up the door and skip. E and F.
So I'm so talking about how you do counter melodies and harmonies. And many of you already figured this out. If it's new to you, talking to you recorder players. <laughs> <laughs> so what, which one is Pavarotti and which one is... <laughs> um, if playing harmony is, is, a, is a new thing, or you're, you're, one thing you can do is just look at the letter name of the chord and play that note. So for example, and it's still on a G, play on the G, play on the G, then you go to a C. You stay on the sea. Chances are, interestingly, it, it isn't for me exactly what you said, that you remember what note you ended with. For me, it's, I remember what note I didn't like. <laughs> ah, so you avoid that I, one. I, I avoid like, that one. I try a different wrong note. note. Right. right. That's, and it's that's allowing right. yourself the freedom to do that. So just give Amen. yourself permission to, to fool around and try it. And also, it, it trains your ear a little. And, you know, True Confessions number 35, one of the advantages of playing scales is, is that, and playing it as a round, is it's training your ear to hear that part, to hear that key. <coughs> playing those scales as a round, what, if you work it out on the piano sometime in your copious free time, you'll see that what you're doing is traversing every chord in that key. So your brain is getting wired to hear those harmonies in that key. And that helps you pick notes. You know, it's Draper's. Okay, Draper's Gardens. Um, Play the melody, uh, you know, here and there, but then venture out and try some things. Either the letter name of the chord, another note in the chord, or the Kate Barnes, Peter Barnes magic method. Choose any note and switch if it's no good. So once again, it's almost like erase the bar lines. And the bar lines are almost in the wrong place because the phrasing is, that's the phrase. that started at midnight, it's done as a rant. And it's the caller's call. I mean, talking about band etiquette. Um, the point of the band is to support the dancers. And the callers, when the callers watch out, I'm going to tell them that they're, you know, the buck stops with the call. Every, you know, if the, if the dancers are messing up, it's because the caller didn't explain something clearly enough. If the room is too hot, because the caller fails to talk to the janitor or the sexton to make sure that the air conditioning was turned off. My view is that the caller is the impresario, the, the, the same tenor. 
And if a caller wants us to be smooth, his concept or her concept of the dance is lyrical, then it's up to the band to play it lyrically. It's your, your job. If her view is that it's a rant, play it as a rant. <laughs> Uh, and as far as you know, historically correct goes, you know the way we dance English country dancing today, you know, and the walking step was probably they wouldn't recognize that as dancing in the 18th century. 18th century English country dancing looked more like modern Royal Scottish country dance dancing. There was a lot of skip change and jetés and assemblé and a lot of stepping. So this lyrical interpretation, you know, we like that. We like the, the smooth, flowing, you know, country dances that we do. But I don't think anybody in the 18th century would recognize that. <laughs> so, by so, younger people. And they were done by, yeah, I mean, Cassandra Austin, Jane Austen's sister. They are married. Yeah. She said she was playing cards at 33 because she was too, too old to dance. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> or was it Jane? No, Jane, right, no, it was Jane writing to Cassandra. Saying, you know, I'm, I'm playing whist in the other room because at age 34. I'm 34. <laughs> Anyone who want to play cards after? <laughs> 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 Round, I, I like the, the, the medieval sound. So the first round will be just the open chord. Very light. Um, the five recorders. Second round, uh, maybe add. Can you bring flute or, or oboe? Um, and save the soprano sax for like the last time. Yeah, you know, like when David that. Cantini goes into his Bombard act. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? And you'll go up and I go on the last time. Or maybe the Canopic. Okay. Now okay. let's try that. So start with the five before. So Keith, if you could give us the two notes. Okay. And um, okay. what is the first one? G. D A G. G. Uh, I, and the other thing is that for the recorders, are, and I'm thinking the dancers point of view, that we really need to like separate the notes. Yeah, short, short, short. short, 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 short. Otherwise, it's not, otherwise, it sounds like you know, Phil Spector's wall of sound. Okay. Not like that. Okay. Okay. Okay.
Well, thank you all very much for the thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.